So we're talking about 10 ways to screw up in Google and 10 ways to fix it. Um, so the session is basically going over any number of issues that can go wrong when uh, dealing with building websites and running websites. So first, uh, first up I have um, you know, various levels of um, face palm. These are the most obvious uh, errors that people make uh, and have quite a dramatic impact. So th th this is level one. Um, observe what's happening here www.dejanseo.com.au and then non w version. Whichever one you load, it, it uh, brings up the same site. This is a canonical issue. Canonicalization is an sp uh, issue specific to search engine optimization industry, but it's something that every developer should be aware of. This is pretty basic stuff. Um, you will notice in many of the slides that I have, uh, we offer a solution straight up. So, a solution for this is 3.1 uh, redirect, and if you can't do that, altern um, alternative to that is rel equals canonical. We'll have to look these things up. All right, so we've got a double face palm situation. So you've got a staging site indexed, and you've got your main site indexed. Did anyone do that? Show of hands. Did it ever happen? Yeah, yeah, a few people. Yeah. Bravely admitting. Um, so solution: no index the staging site. For Christ's sake. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so three months of my SEO wasted, and look at this guy, almost two years of work down the drain. Seriously? All you have to do is go to admin options and tick the privacy, appropriate privacy box in your WordPress. It's like a default setting. Um, so this is the line of code that it actually adds to. So it's quite unbelievable that some people don't pick that up and wonder, why is my website ranking in search engines for two years, and I've been link building and writing content and all this. It's, it's really quite sad. <laughs> so um, Panda, very short, is about is a search quality algorithm within Google that uh, works around quality signals. So quality of content, quality of uh, layout, and so forth. So uh, some web masters are feeding Panda with rubbish, and Panda loves it and takes action against against such websites. So. Part of the, uh, this, this segment of the presentation is all about Panda and um, how to feed it. So, well, feed it fluff. Panda loves to eat fluff. And by fluff, I mean anything that's indexable and it shouldn't be indexable. So, here we see category, research. You can, you can hit that category through, uh, say, if you're running a WordPress site here. Um, and basically what this means is that all your category pages, all your tag pages and so forth, they'll all be indexed. Google doesn't want those pages really in their index, they want the actual content page in the index. So when users uh, find something, they're not uh, forced to search through stuff to find what they're really after. So solution for that is just no index. Um, uh, pro tip, people will sometimes link to these double pages, so you don't want a no index, no follow. If you in, no index but uh, don't implement no follow on these type of pages, you will be getting page rank flowing even if it comes from external sources. So, same situation here is with a um, tag um, type situation and when you have pagination. Uh, solution for this for how many people have used uh, rel equals uh, next and prev? So, this is pretty much a standard. Um, when you're when you have a, uh, a product listing or uh, uh, some sort of search result when you're allowing Google to index this, you should tell them these are just, these are not separate pages, these are actually um, you know, part of the same unit. I'm just breaking them up, down into several pages because you don't want to have many pages in Google's index. They want less, fewer number of pages but of a higher quality. So here's uh, some explanation and these, these two articles, you, can, you will get these slides later on. Uh, that explain this issue a little bit better. Infinite navigational structures. This is a, a classic example of how things can go wrong. If you allow Google to, um, this one, this specific screenshot is taken from Virgin website. Um, they're a client of ours, so obviously there's no issue there, but I'm just using for illustrative purposes. Um, if you allow search engines to click into a day and then month and then, you can, you can understand how this could go into an infinite uh, sort of scenario. 
If you allow search engines to, to crawl your calendar item and go through every day and every month and year, and they can go to 2,113 and still create fluff. So you, you want to prevent indexation of these type of pages um, by either disallowing uh, robots to crawl them or by implementing no index. So here's a, um, another example I see a lot. So infinite faceted navigation. So if you're running websites with uh, big catalogs or uh, e-commerce stores, so here we see, you know, um, I took this screenshot from eBay. They do it well, by the way. Um, but in, in some cases, like you can click on Intel and then you can pick your uh, RAM and then hard drive capacity. And you can sort the results, sort the search results that come up on the right-hand side in any number of ways. You can add color, you can add this, and by the, by, the, by the time you combine all these things, you'll end up with a lot of search results. Google is a search engine. They provide search results. They don't want you to provide search results. So they index, and then it's double, kind of double handling. So this is a screenshot of one website. Uh, I started from not a home page, but a subcategory, electronics. And then electronics category broke down into several subpages. And each one of the subpages, I only exploded one here, so you can see each one of these pages explodes into more. And for one you can see here, by the way, I use uh, PowerMapper uh, software to map the structure of this website. Very handy application if you're running small, small scale sites. So as you can see, each step down, down the track, um, this navigational structure is getting larger and larger. So this website is never going to end. Google's going to continuously and infinitely um, continue to find new pages and continually index more and more stuff to the point where they had 60 million pages in Google's index and only 20,000 products. That's a zoom out. Look, that goes literally forever until the software crashes. So this is a scenario where you have 4,000 products and 400,000 pages indexed in Google. That is bad. That is panda food. All right, so lost and found. So his, his uh, varying degrees of fail. Um, by the way, uh, Martin Reed, who presented here um, before me, uh, he's upset with my usage of the socially awkward penguin that he says the blue should be at the top and red at the bottom. So I apologize. Um, OK, so the point is, hello, I'm a 404 page, but I return 200 index. And I'm indexed in, in Google. That is bad. Um, second scenario. It looks like a 200 page, but it's a 404, and it's not indexed. That's just as bad, probably worse. Um, so basically, I have seen cases where a home page of a website, it looks like it should be a 200, it returns 404. I use a, a handy little plugin for uh, Chrome uh, made by AIMA. You can look it up in uh, Chrome extensions. Uh, it basically gives you a little status of uh, what, a, what, what code it, the page returns. So in this case, the home page of the site was returning 404 and Google wouldn't index it. What would the index are not, not found? So, and then this one, this one actually gets me emotional and upset. Um, <laughs> gets a government link, you know, lots of good links to the, to the page, changes your URL structure, forgets to 301. Really? And I, I see developers doing this all the time. They get a great website, it ranks really well, and they're just like, oh, let's, URLs are too long, and just for no reason, change a framework, ch change it from Drupal to WordPress, as you would. Um, <laughs> if I was at a Drupal conference, I'd say the other way around. <laughs> um, so basically, change URL structure for whatever reason, and then uh, not 301. That's, yeah, that's upsetting. And this one is like my favorite. Um, this screenshot I took from um, iStock Photo. I was looking for, I, from, for stock photos to make this presentation. While doing so, I find one, uh, find a problem. I type in 404 into a search box, and it gives me a 404. <laughs> <laughs> any clue how that happened? Any clue? I'll take any answer. How, how would this happen? Yeah, they were just mass capturing, you know, like whenever there's a 404 mention in a URL, they go, oh, we'll send that to a 404 page. They were probably trying to wildcard handle a lot of, a lot of different situations. And that uh, failed miserably. So all the people who submitted 404 type images, they're not selling any of their stock. 
I would be quite upset with iStock Photo. I did tell them about this. I don't, I'm not sure if they. So uh, the, the pr problem with this is that actually I don't know if it's a problem, but actually 302. So 302 is a temporary redirect, and 301 is a permanent uh, server redirect. 301 you use when you really want to say, say to Google or any other search engine that page is moved and they'll never come back from that old old location. You use 302 when it's just a temporary redirect, but it'll come back. So another factor for Panda is being ugly. So if you make ugly websites, that is now a search engine factor. So, um, and I'll define what ugly means. Basically, uh, this is a relatively new thing. So search engines now look at um, ads, like if it's ad heavy at the top, um, and if you have poor usability, poor user interface, um, trust factors. So they started off with asking people questions. Do you like this website? How is the design? Do you trust it? And this article here I recommend everyone reads. Um, you can find it in Google by searching uh, more guidance on building high quality. And it's written by Amit Singhal from Google. He's like pretty high up as far as the uh, search algorithm goes. Um, and that article contains some really interesting questions. One is, would you be comfortable giving your credit card information to this website? Do you, does, does it have bad spelling uh, or stuff, stylistic or factual errors? Uh, is it edited well? Does it, does it have an uh, excessive amount of ads? Are the pages produced with great care and attention uh, or not? So these things now play a role in how well your website will be ranked. And some minus points could be assigned to your website if it looks not so trustworthy. So while, while Panda is um, a page quality and algorithm, Penguin looks for link schemes. So I think we all know that you know links help your rankings, and if you want to rank for um, Web Design Melbourne, you'll put Web Web Design Melbourne in the footer of all your clients. Yeah, who does that? That smells fishy to Google, um, and Penguin will catch it as soon as it escalates to a a significant level to affect their rankings. So. Penguin's style um, mistakes, unguarded user-generated content. That there, porn movies download, is a link to the Jean SEO. So it's, in fact, a negative SEO attempt by a competitor, um, spamming uh, comments. So what this webmaster did wrong is they're allowing, they're not not following their comments. So you can put whatever keyword you want and it just passes the link. So by the way, for those who don't know, rel equals nofollow prevents the link from being a search engine ranking signal. So on any user-generated content that you don't trust and you can't vouch for, you should implement rel equals nofollow on this. Link schemes. So basically anything that you've thought of and you think it's a great idea uh, to mass scale, automate, or manipulate in terms of links and anchor text and Anchor text is the keyword contained within the link. Um, so basically, we're looking at automated links. Um, I did talk to somebody yesterday who um, said that they created a, um, a nice little plugin that um, has a, uh, you know, a keyword in it, and that plugin became very popular. So when you install it, it adds a link. And that became so popular that so many websites started using it, but it was used by spammy websites. You, a plugin that you write and gives you a link could be on a porn site, it could be on any number of dodgy sites, where's websites, and do you really want to get link, links from those? So by submitting out there, creating a widget, you know, thinking, ah, oh, I'm going to get lots of links, you could get lots of links from a lot of bad places. Inbound links can harm you. People always thought, oh no, only if I link out to others, but if they link to me, how can they harm me because anyone can do it? Well, in fact, Google can penalize websites for receiving bad inbound links. Blog networks, if you go and buy 2,000 links from different websites, um, you can now get in trouble. Penguin is designed, has been designed to catch people cheating uh, on a mass scale like that. So we've got typical web spam, clever tactics, you know, like creating a widget or a, a WordPress plugin, or even using your clients to heavily link your anchor text so you can rank better. Um, create a whole network of your own websites, interlink them together, and automated reciprocal links. So I wrote quite extensively on this uh, topic, uh, trying to explain why Google 
um, can catch and will catch all these attempts at manipulation. So one is called, you can Google it, Y links, or just Google link schemes, and you will find that article. Um, and one guide I recommend you all um, read is Google Link Disavow Tool. So this is a, a brand new tool um, created by Google that allows you to specify which links you want to disassociate yourself from. Let's say um, a competitor buys 2,000 links from a link farm in, in order to damage your website's reputation in uh, Google. And you go, whoa, what's this? You go to Google Webmasters Tools, export all those bad links, and you chuck them in Google's link disavow tool, and apparently you're protected. There's some controversy surrounding this, the whole topic, but I'm not going to go into this uh, just yet. So, and this is the URL for the actual link disavow tool. Basically what this tool does is it allows you to specify these are not mine, I'm not responsible for these. So, what happens when you are actually penalized? Um, I don't have time to go through this entire diagram, but this is the process, and it's quite complicated, and it takes a long time to get out of, out of jail with Google. And more than likely, you always need to submit a reconsideration request. Um, so, very handy slide if you already... Um, has, is anyone being affected? Does anyone think they're penalized or their traffic is affected? A few hands up. Yep. Including the guy who did the plugin. Um, so... This is a, a pretty sound uh, flowchart to get you out of trouble and to dis help you decide how to go about re-inclusion. Being generic is nothing really that bad, but it's nothing really that great either. So when, when people uh, create websites, they typically, you know, here's a product. You know, it's got a title, description, price, I can buy it, and it's got an image. What else do you need? Well, guess what? somebody will be selling that same product and have better information and more information. If you just get your product description from the, your manufacturer's database, or your supplier's database, everyone else does that. Google doesn't want to show the same result over and over again. They want unique stuff. So what you have to do is work with the client or just on your own to create richer um, overviews for your product pages or landing pages. Always a unique product title, always a unique custom written description. Allowing user-generated content, remembering to not follow any links. Um, using uh, internal data within the website, like price trends or uh, demographics and purchase of the item. Um, including more images in the gallery. This is the top kind of stuff that Google really likes these days. So, here's some stuff around location and language. This is relatively new. Uh, some people may not be aware of this. Um, has anyone uh, used the alternate href lane? About maybe eight people. Um, how about the x default? One. Okay. So in this situation, we have a jeanacio.com, coinz, we don't, but uh, just let's say we do. So .com.au.co.uk. These are all English speaking um, countries. So the situation we have here is we've got four websites with exactly the same content. This is content duplication, it could be a problem. Um, so what do we do? Uh, well, in some, in some scenarios we could even run jeanacio.com and then have AU or NZ or UK instead. Whatever the situation is, um, you, have, uh, you have created a, a content duplication problem with the only tiny little difference between, say for example, currency or you know, using American English or UK English and, you know, maybe addresses. Only, you're only sending a few signals to tell Google that these are, you know, um, separate countries by the same language. It could be the other way around. It could be uh, serving same country, different languages. There's a lot of countries where they use uh, uh, different languages within. So, here's the format. Um, basically, on all the pages that you, uh, that contain different language variations, or that you want to serve the content in a different country. Basically, with this, with this code here, you're taking charge, you're saying, serve this page in the UK, serve that page in Germany. And if you're dealing with a large multilingual website, and you want Google to pick one version as a, as a default version, that's that um, final step there. So, you, you're over there, you're using uh, these, so what type of website is it, e-commerce or information website? E-commerce, e Yeah, excellent. 
So good to see that some people are on board with this. Um, so Viagra is the number nine. Um, so the website talks about climate change, but ranks for five Viagra, five fifty milligrams. Um, so basically, not patching, not protecting, not guarding. There's there's even plugins. I'm not going to go into details, but allowing uh, your website to be hacked, you're open for manipulation by black hat SEOs, and. You end up with a little this site maybe compromise line when people search for. Of course, your, your click-through rate will plummet once you have that. Nobody's going to click on that. Um, additionally, if you want to see some examples of this, just type in site colon edu au and then Viagra. You will see pretty much that. So some pretty terrible. So that's the guy, uh, the site talking about climate change. And this is cathedral website. Very very inappropriate. <laughs> So final um, element, and, and, I'm, and I would imagine not many will know about this, is that uh, people can hijack your content and rank and outrank you for it. Um, has anyone seen that happen to the, their client or their own website? You probably don't even know. Um, but it happens often. So I, I read a research paper that discusses how page rank actually works. So in the research paper, um, they say if you have a page and it receives page rank from different sources and if somebody creates a copy and they just receive high page rank than the sum of all your page rank pointing to your page amazingly what Google does is they will just go no, that's a copy and the copy becomes the original you're down the drain and all the page rank that's pointing to your side goes to the copy I thought no way but I thought, all right, let's, let's test. I like testing things. Seeing is believing. So this, Rand Fishkin is uh, potentially the most famous SEO guy in the world. So I emailed him and I said, can I try this on your page? I think it might work. And he's like, all right, do it. <laughs> um, so uh, a week later, rand.dijanseo.com.au, completely replacing his website. His blog gone. Now it's me. <laughs> so, well, I guess what I'm trying to say here is, don't, like, don't do that. Um, <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm really saying here is guard your content. Guard your content. If somebody's copying your material, you've got to be um, on it and say, hey, if you're, if you're uh, stealing my content, link back. Attribution. Credit. Um, or... Uh, request a uh, DMCA. So, what happened afterwards after my little experiment? I got a penalty from Google. Um, it was a granular action, so it wasn't affecting the whole site, thank God. Um, and it, they said specifically copied content. They, they were general enough, so it's like a big message, but saying, you did potentially this, 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 and obviously copied content. So, my gut feeling is that this story escalated because it was all over the news and in you know, SEO circles and so I think some of their web spam team manually flagged this page and issued a penalty uh, rather than being caught algorithmically. So don't count on algorithms saving you. Um, but uh, the penalty was lifted once I um, dissolved all those uh, pages and uh, uh, everything was restored. So in a little summary, just like to point out a few of your best friends to keep safe in Google. Um, Rel Alternate Href Lang X and its, uh, its default version basically telling serve this page in the States, serve this page in Brazil, use this language in this search engine or this variation of Google. Um, Rel Next and Prev for uh, pagination. Rel Canonical. Rel Canonical is, in essence is if you have 10 URLs referring to the same page. And one URL is, for example, and background equals blue. Doesn't really change the content of the page, but it's just another URL for the same page. You want to make sure that they're all rel canonicalized towards one core page, the cleanest page that you have. Rel equals no follow protects you from bad inbound links if you're doing widgets and things like that, and also um, prevents uh, you from linking to bad websites, specifically if you have user generated content. No index follow, handy for, you know, categories and tags, meaning 
you don't want this page in the Google's index, you're preventing yourself from panda issues, but you're allowing PageRank to flow. So if people link to you with inbound links into your content, uh, you're still getting that juice. 301, permanent server redirect. If you change your URL, if it's a permanent change, you always put that in place. And sometimes 404 is a useful thing. It's not always a bad thing to have a 404 page. You are telling a search engine, this page is gone and it's not coming back. Actually, but there's, a, there's another code for that, but uh, essentially, I'm not there anymore. So, um, sometimes it's useful, but if you think that there might be links still pointing to that, to that page, you probably don't want to do a 404, you want to do a 301 to something else. All right, so I'm 25 minutes, I think, into my presentation. We have time for Q&A or bonus material. So it's up to you guys. Who wants to see Q or who wants Q&A? Bonus? Every time. <laughs> so here's some helpful tips um, and time savers when you find yourself in trouble. Um, here's what I learned from Google. I asked them directly. Inbound links with rel equals no follow are not part of Google's link graph. So they can't help your rank and they can't harm you, period. That's it. So what this means is that if you are affected by a penguin or a, a other type of link type penalty, this means that when you're doing a link cleanup and you export all your links from Google Webmasters Tools or Open Site Explorer or Majestic or Ahrefs, these are all tools that you can use to um, export your backlinks. Basically, you should not be spending time cleaning up, going to all these webmasters, oh, can you please remove this link, it's harming me. You know, if it's a rel equals no follow, just leave it. Don't ignore it, but leave it for last. Because sometimes webmasters can take down the rel equals no follow. It doesn't happen often, but it, but, but it could happen. Uh, so you want to clean up everything, but rel equals no follow links are your last priority. So links from the index network, has anyone used ALN or is it Build My Rank or what other type of link networks? Nobody wants to admit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few people would have to have used it. Um, basically, if the whole link network, this is another interview with, uh, with Google in the Google Hangout with John Mueller, he said, if uh, um, a link network has been de-indexed, those links are no longer helping or harming the website. So that's kind of nice. Again, it's not your first priority in link cleanup. Uh, or you can put it in link disavow tool as well. But um, the idea is that you can work on other stuff so you're not spending time on this because it's not really harming you anymore. Um, one great piece of advice that I've uh, received from Google was uh, that it should be enough to download your links from Google Webmasters tools to do a link cleanup. When I, I keep talking link cleanup, link cleanup, essentially removing all the links that you regret you've done or your SEO company has done in the past. You want to get yourself out of jail. Um, so it's good enough to export them from Google Webmasters tools um, and there's no need to pay for any additional tools. If you want to sort the, you know, by anchor text and filter them and do all these extra things, that's when these other tools can come in handy. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though is with Google Webmasters tools, they do include rel equals no, no, um, rel equals no follow links as well. So. You can use another tool to determine which links exported from Google Webmasters tool contain rel equals no follow and not really worry about those as a first priority. Oh, don't remove all your links. I've seen webmasters going, oh, I've a penalty, okay. Disavow everything, remove every single link, and they're not ranking anymore. Surprise, surprise. So, recommendation there, in identify what a bad link is and remove in stages. Step by step, you know, remove the bad stuff first and then maybe borderline sneaky things later on if it doesn't help. Uh, document and communicate frequently with, with Google. Web spam team is quite good at replying. They'll at least send you an automated email saying, we have reviewed your website, we still see problems with your links. Uh, they, they will reply. So here's another tip. Um, unrelated to penalties, but uh, it, it's great with uh, helping a website uh, rank and it hel helps your content get distributed. One thing I notice when you canonicalize your, uh, if you don't canonicalize your content, let's say for example somebody goes to this page and shares this hash, comment, whatever, uh, I'm guessing this is either discuss or something. So it says that uh, Facebook likes a zero, plus is a zero, and dig is zero. A lot of people really use dig, but. Um, <laughs> 
these zeros mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's not that great, so I'm not going to share it myself. But what happens if you, if you implement row equals canonical, and you say this page is really that page, suddenly you're starting to see proper social signals the way that they, the way that they are for all the canonical versions of this main URL. What this means is that looks a lot more likely to be shared than that. And uh, I, I wrote about the, the whole topics of, of social signal consolidation on this, this URL here. Um, one final thing that I want to share, I guess, um, is that it's not always your fault uh, when something goes down, like your traffic goes down or something great happens and you're thinking, oh, I've changed this, I've changed the name of the image and now I'm ranking first, so it must be the signal that, that I was missing. Sometimes Google changes their algorithm on their own and for whatever reason, you know, correlation does not, uh, causation, correlation problem. So you've got um, good days and bad days as far as search engine algorithm goes. I created a little tool called Algoru, algoru.com. Basically what it does, it scans um, uh, maybe some 20,000 keywords and searches for turbulence in the results for these keywords. So if a lot of keywords go up and down in Google's algorithm, with Google search results, we see it as red or orange. And if it's a quiet day, you know, results are pretty stagnant, you know, it's just a normal, uh, we see it sort of more or less green. So you can see how keywords are never equal, they always fluctuate. Google runs two tests per day. So they, they, they might run, you know, something like thousand tweaks of the algorithm over a year. So this tool helps me um, figure out if something that's happened on a site in terms of traffic impact is something that I've done, or is it just like, you know, top level algorithm change. So that's, uh, that's all I have for you. Um,